Hello YouTubers and welcome to War Thunder. This is the Flying Ross and here is this little intro to historical battles. So I, I'm going to assume that you've already played the game and you've already chosen a nation to start leveling and you've said, hey, arcade battles is not for me, I want to try out historical. First thing to understand about historical is that your aircraft actually performs at, as best as historical accurate as possible. So, unlike arcade, where a lot of aircraft are almost on par with uh, with each other, they are not in historical battle. So that means that your aircraft will only climb at a certain rate and will only turn a certain way, and people can outclimb you and outturn you. First things first, also, is you have to keep track of your speed. As if you look in the top left-hand corner, I have my spe speed set as IAS. IS is your indicated airspeed, and it shows the actual uh, measurement of the air going over your wing, and not the relation of speed of you across the ground. What this comes in handy is when you're actually uh, diving or turning to make sure you're not breaking your wings, because in this mode, you can break your wings. As a rule of thumb, you do not want to be pu putting your uh, landing gear down uh, above 300, and you don't want to put landing flaps up above 350. Now, in certain aircraft, you can, can go above these speeds, but this is generally a good idea for any aircraft that is pro uh, propeller driven. Another thing, your gauges do work. So, if you want to actually fly in cockpit mode, most of these, if not all, are actually working. Your fuel, your airspeed, um, and this is in, that's in miles per hour because we are in a British or er, American aircraft, and I have mine selected uh, kilometers an hour. Your coolant temperature right there, um, RPMs. If we measure back, you can see it drops down, and then push forward, it goes all the way up. Same does your manifold pressure, climb rate, heading, which is exactly where we're heading. Now F controls your flaps. And it's something that you will need to learn how to use um, either combat flaps, which is one F, or you raise them. Or you can use your uh, brackets, and you can actually tap once for combat, tap twice for takeoff, and then landing, and then it recycles going down. You will get warnings about if you should retract your uh, landing gear or your flaps if you're going too fast general uh, rule of thumb about speed is if to actually engage in combat you want to be above 300 kilometers an hour IAS. Now P-40s do not climb that well and as you can see we have targets already above us. Now these are more than likely Rio, Shoji, and Alex but couldn't and may, might not be because they do have other aircraft as well here. Oh, definitely not so because Sochi's there. And there's Alec. So there's KF-43 and their other KF-43 is ahead of, uh, higher than us. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use our teammate as uh, kind of bait. So the P-40 is below us and then we have P-40 in front of us. And what we're trying to do is we need to head around these guys and hopefully they go after them. And then we can pounce on them. Even though that one KI-43 is really low and on our guy and it looks like it's an easy kill, it might be, but then we would be putting ourselves at a huge disadvantage against these aircraft. That K uh, A6M2 is going after AI, and then we still have the KI-43 there. Keeping track of your enemy, especially when you're not squat up with other players, is sometimes really hard to do. Because you are bound to get tunnel visions, and what will happen is you'll be concentrating so hard to kill this one guy that, and one of his teammates will inevitably end up on your tail and then try to kill you. Understanding your aircraft and what your advantages are over every single enemy aircraft is what will keep you alive or what will kill you. So we're going off this KA-43 and we know that there's one higher than us and also now we know there's one in front of us. You want to always avoid head-ons as much as possible because they're just not worth it. And then you're going to try to use your turning speed here and get on his six. So we know that we're going to turn better here. 
Actually, with this Scarecraft, we might, probably won't. So we give up a pursuit of the turn, and then we come back to it as we gain some speed and gain some distance. Now he's busy with other guys, and now we can get, and get maybe a shot here as we come in. You always want to try to gang up on people, and you never want to really take shots by yourself. And uh, you will eventually have your, you know, your kill, quote unquote, stolen. But it's part of the game, and you have to kind of get used to it because being alive is a whole lot better. Now, convergence and vertical targeting do matter. Mine are set right now to 500 on both, because that's just what I kind of found uh, how I like my 50s. You can set them to 300 is another good distance, but it's just a matter of what you find and what you like. So I see these guys low, and we got guys up high to handle them. So we're going to try to dive after this guy. Now keep in mind the IAS above uh, is going to approach 700, which is pretty much our top speed, especially in this aircraft. So we want to be careful and watch our G limit, and then once our G limit falls below 700, now we can start making maneuvers. Throwing our comet flaps. See if we can pull really hard G's this way. Come back around. Get on this guy's butt. And there's the aircraft destroyed. Put the throttle back up. Now we can get out of here. So that's one aircraft dead. Triple A will mess you up. Substantially. <laughs> so stay away. You do have a predetermined amount of ammunition as well, that, which is predefined on your aircraft's card. Um, you can look at that before you take off. Or you can also look at that when in the in hangar before you even join the game. So whatever ammo that you take off with is the ammo you have. There's no reloading in midair, unlike arcade. You can rearm and repair, but you would have to land at an airport, or in this case, an aircraft carrier. So if we have two targets that are higher than us, and thus they have more energy than us. So we're going to try to go into the vertical here, just real quick. We got a pass, but then we got a nose back down. And get our energy back. Because you can see that we spent a lot of energy climbing up. KI-43 for some reason turned away from us. He had an easy shot. Yep, coming back. Nope. Gotta watch out for other players because they do like to ram. My guy really came in close there. Going vertical like this when someone's on your six is actually pretty much the stupidest thing that you can do. Um, unless you're in a zero. If you're in a zero, then you can actually get away with it most of the times just because of how fast you can uh, get around. And that aircraft's done. And he just crashed because he just lost control of his aircraft. You can over instructor in here in the dock. This is a deflection shot. You see we got a critical on the wing. Throw in our flaps to get around, put them back on. And boom, goes the dynamite. So now we just have AI left and we have nothing left to really kill. That matters. So we can go back and not die. And then not dying is pretty much the most important in a circle battle because the higher aircraft that you get, the more expensive they will become. Some aircraft, especially like in the MiG-15 uh, on uh, top tier, will cost you in the 90,000 credits per, uh, per death. Not fun. 
So the game lasted a little over 11 minutes. Um, sometimes you will spend a good part of the game, first five minutes, climbing. Because that's the most important thing you can do, is climb. Always remember that you want to be higher than your enemy, except for if you're in, maybe in an air crash, but it's not designed to do it. If you're in a turn fighter, like a zero, uh, maybe sometimes it's not necessarily best to be higher than the enemy, because you want them to overshoot you, and you can actually get them on the tail as they try to over a turn with you. There's different tactics that you can use, but it all comes down to one thing, is how much energy you have and how much energy you can retain. Because even if I'm lower than the guy, if he wastes his energy and I can get on his six, and pretty much it's really hard to shake anyone that's actually behind you. Once that happens, unless you just have a crazy amount of forward airspeed, um, that will be the only way they can really get rid of someone. Especially if you're in aircraft, like, um, you know, if you're in the A-20, you can outrun most aircraft with your tier. Um, if you're in a Sabre, a uh, straight line distance, you can outrun most people your tier. P-51 can outrun most BF-109s in a straight line. As you can see on our bottom, uh, bottom right, we have our uh, oil overheated. And did this so you guys can show, uh, see that our cooling temperature has risen about double to almost triple what it was before. You can actually still da damage your engine as you keep on wepping, and eventually your oil will overheat. If you have water uh, coolant, you'll ha uh, overheat your wo uh, water, as well as you can, and then these, oh, nope. You can see there, I got uh, the landing gear out and the flaps. No warning. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick intro to historical battles. And you will like it as much as I do. Because once you really get into this and you learn it, and it is a very steep learning curve, uh, you will enjoy the rewards. With two air kills with premium air, uh, air I got 24,000. And it's really nice to actually play and get these higher rewards. As always, this is the Flying Ross, and I hope you enjoyed the video.